Um, and and one one thing uh, I would like to add to this is is you know uh, the one who is worthy to open up the scroll. Every time I read this, um, I think about the one who is worthy to open up the scroll. And and what what do you think about Thaddeus when you hear when you hear you know someone who is able to open up the scroll and read it? What do you think about? Yeah, I mean that immediately calls the words of Revelation, mm -hmm. where the angels are sitting around maybe not sitting around man not the best description but you know they're gathered around and they they're like there's no one worthy of opening this seal and then jesus shows up and he opens it mm -hmm. um so i'm gonna actually pull this up really quick just because this is a this is a beautiful passage and if i get worked up i'm not lying to you almost every time i read this i get choked up but i've never tried reading this in front of people so hopefully i'll remain strong in this right so this is revelation chapter five uh, says, real quick, real yeah, quick sorry, before you get into that passage, I just want to address this first. Um, Mojo Dude said L is God and Ari is Lion, right? And that is correct. Yes. And Hebrew names are never just names as we think of them. They're mm -hmm. never just identifiers. You know, uh, they always have a purpose. Now, sometimes the purpose is ironic. So you, you, you don't have to be careful. But it is definitely intentional that Lion of God is the name of this figure. Yeah. And so we're going to read about this lion of God figure, right? So Ariel means has a lot of different meanings. And so when I say double entendre, it could be like a multi-layered entendre, right? We can talk about Jerusalem, lion of God, uh, hero of sorts is another way that you could um, render that uh, Hebrew word. And then altar hearth is another way that you could, you could do this. And you'll see a very odd way that Jesus kind of fulfills all of these different ways. So this is Revelation chapter five. Then I saw the right hand of him who was seated on the throne with a scroll, scroll written um, and on the back sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under earth was able to open the scroll or look into it, and I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. Here's our lion. The roots of David has conquered so that he can open up the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne of the four living creatures among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out to all the earth. And he went and he took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken uh, the scroll, the four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which the prayers of the saints and they sang a new song worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals for you were slain and by your blood you ransomed people for god for every tribe and language and people and nation and you have made them a kingdom of priests to our god and they shall reign on the earth um, and then it goes on to say, worthy is the lamb who was slain, who received power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. So, um, you can see a lot of really cool things in here. I know this isn't the, the point of, of today's message, um, but you, you see that Jesus is called the lion of the tribe of Judah. And then John, who is the one who is, is receiving this revelation or this vision, right? Think about this, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And then he turns and he looks. And what does he see, Thaddeus? Does he see a lion? Yes. No, he does not yep. see a lion. He sees the lamb as if it had lamb. been slain. Yes, yeah, right. So in between the throne of the four living creatures, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain. So this lamb is also identified um, as the lion and the only person worthy to um, read this scroll is the, the lamb. 
we also see two creatures, right? We can see from um, from Daniel uh, chapter seven, this the um, one like the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of of God, coming with the clouds of of heaven. Um, we we see this this imagery taking place here. There's so many things, so many culminations of the entire scriptures coming coming to life here in Revelation chapter five. Um, but we also see at the very end that to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Who are they worshiping? That is. They are worshiping the lamb. They are worshiping the lion. They are mm -hmm. worshiping Jesus Christ. Yep, and they're worshiping the one who sits on the throne, and we are seeing Trinitarian language here in the Bible. All right, I made it through. I didn't cry. I'm proud of myself. Um, <laughs> so yes, Mojo, dude, that was a, that was very prophetic of you to say El is God and Ariel is Lamb, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I wasn't even planning on getting into that, so by you saying that, it actually prompted me. I was already going to read Revelation. I, I just got that prompting. Uh, but when you said it, it actually brought to light uh, how Ariel can actually have that meaning as well. Excellent. So that's pretty much it for me. Uh, I don't know if anybody in the audience uh, has anything else to say. Thaddeus, if you would like to add anything. Yep, uh, uh, well. I will go ahead and invite any. I haven't seen any Muslims commenting throughout, um, but I will go ahead and uh, open up the, the stream. For any Muslim who wants to do so, we'll give them a couple minutes to, to hop on up. You just can go to theology.chat if you would like to join us here live. If you'd like to give us an argument for why you think Muhammad is in the Bible. If you have any reason to believe that uh, you know we're, we've been mistaken here that uh, we've misspoke about Isaiah 21 or um, Isaiah 29 or any of the other passages we've looked at. We'd welcome that now because these streams are about the truth. Uh, you know, I get accusations every day from Muslims that I, I hate them, that I just want to make fun of Muslims, that uh I put less nicely that I'm doing Satan's work and I'm going to hellfire, uh, you know, but it, what we're really after here is truth. And since we have truth on our, our side, we're not afraid to welcome people live. You know, you can come and end our careers by embarrassing us and showing us what fools we are. We'll give it just a couple minutes for that. I don't anticipate, since I didn't see any Muslim comments, I don't anticipate there will be anyone today. Yeah, what the heck, is... man? That's, that's, uh, I don't know if that's ever happened with any live stream I've ever been on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't know that's if we should, should cry about it, right? Because they, or, or celebrate, um, you know, like it, on, on one sense, uh, maybe they're not showing up because they feel like they don't have any reputation, which I can't believe they wouldn't feel that way because. They always feel like they can refute us um, or, uh, you know, they've, uh, they're, they're just, they're just, uh, you know, not interested or they're too scared perhaps to, to come up and they, they are indicating that they have been defeated and uh, you know, eventually <laughs> they'll be coming up and uh, announcing that they've accepted Jesus as their Lord and savior. And they're going to be getting baptized. Um, so I don't really know how to take it, my friend. Yeah. It, it was definitely unusual in that regard. Maybe the, the time slot had something to do with it. Obviously, a good portion of the Muslim population lives in a small geographic area and was rather late at night. It was, you know, probably around uh, midnight when we started. So that could be mm -hmm. part of it. However, the people who usually come up and chat with us are from the UK. And it definitely was not too late for the UK. So who knows? Uh, but we we do have a comment here from Makit. Getting baptized this coming weekend. Awesome to hear that. That's awesome. Congratulations. Makit Mahmoud. 
That's awesome. I would love to, uh, Makita, if you're interested, uh, maybe not today, if, you know, I know it takes a lot of typing, but, um, you know, in brief, what, what led you to the Lord? Were you an atheist, agnostic, uh, some other religion before you came to find Christ? Um, I would love to just kind of hear uh, and see a brief, brief testimony of, of what, what led you to making the decision to follow Jesus. I think that would be interesting. Yeah, so I can definitely fill in from the previous stream where McKee, okay. uh joined. He, he said that he is a ex-Muslim, new Christian. He said that uh, my videos were a part of that. And I was supposed to have a live chat with him this weekend. Uh, didn't get a chance to do that. I was too busy, but definitely looking forward to hearing about it because he wants to tell me about how Islam is destroying his country, destroying his family. Um, you know, he's, he's all in, right? <laughs> he, he's completely and totally out of Islam and now sees it as completely evil, which is what usually happens when someone mm -hmm. leaves Islam. Uh, it's very difficult to leave. So you have to get to the point where it's not just false. It's downright evil before you're willing to make that mm -hmm. step. Yeah, for sure. But man, God, God bless you. May God uh, uh, strengthen you and your walk. And I'm sure it's going to be challenging with you, your family and, and your community. Um, and uh, I, I just pray for, for peace, no matter what kind of um, mayhem may come from the decision that, that you have made in that sense. Uh, and but as uh, David Wood says over and over again, when he had his conversations with Nabil Qureshi and he finally uh, you know, left Islam and, and became a Christian. He says, Muslims, ex-Muslims make the coolest Christians. So um, looking, looking forward to uh, hearing a little bit about your story, my friend. But thank you for filling in on that, Thaddeus. Absolutely. Uh, so Mary, fashionably late, says, hello, I just left church. So Mary just got here right as we're ending. However, Ruth uh, asked if she could come up and talk to us and i said sure so we'll give it wide a open. obviously uh roof is not a muslim but we'd be happy to to hear what you have to say for a few minutes for sure and, and shout out to her channel i know we did this last time um she is doing uh, apologetics and polemics um apologetics for christianity polemics against islam in spanish um so if you guys ever do have any interactions with Spanish speaking people, or, you know, they probably speak a little bit of English. Um, that that's how you're communicating with them. Uh, but they want to get their information in their, their native language, send them over to Ruth's channel there, which you can see pulled up on the screen. Um, even if you don't speak Spanish, uh, it's always good for the YouTube algorithm to like their videos, subscribe to their videos, comment on their videos, um, and even if you literally just click play and, you know, since you might not be able to understand Spanish and just let it play out, all those things are really good for algorithms on helping the message of whatever that channel you're watching, get out and, uh, get in front of more and more people. Definitely. You know, if you, if you, uh, watch the video all the way through, even if you're not actually watching it, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube won't know the difference, yep. right? Yep. Uh, Billy Mandalay says, the truth has set you free from Islam. Mel says, praise the Lord. Uh, Mojo Dude also says, praise the Lord, praise his promise. Villainous says, fantastic news. I think there, were, there was a couple more. Yes, uh, William, praise the Lord. Tamara, praise God. A lot of people celebrating our new brother in Christ, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. It's always good to, to hear that someone has left Islam, yes, but so much better to hear that they have come to Christ. Amen. So we'll give Ruth another second here since she asked to us to. While we're waiting for Ruth, let's go ahead and remind everyone of the theme song because we have yet to find Muhammad in the Bible. However, when we cannot find Muhammad, we know what to do. We need to just keep searching. And that is what we are going to do in 
future episodes. I believe Isaiah 42 will be up next. This one is perhaps mm -hmm. the most favorite passage of Muslims today. Once upon a time, it was Deuteronomy 18. But nowadays, Isaiah 42, this is the one that they think solves all of their problems and finally shows us where Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. I think we may have to reuse that. I can't believe it's not. <laughs> That'll definitely be a part of it for sure. I mean, for sure. All righty. Uh, we'll give Ruth another minute. I'll play this through. And if she's not up by the end of that, then we'll call it a night. Our hero is having a rough time. Every time he thinks he has found evidence of Muhammad, it disappears into a bottomless pit of reason and common sense. Muhammad, no, no, where's Muhammad? No more there, no more there, no more anywhere. Hey, what are you doing? Looking for Muhammad in the Bible. That verse was my only chance of finding him, and now it's gone. Hey, Mr. Grumpy Muslim. When Muhammad can't be found, you know what you gotta do. I don't wanna know. Just keep searching, just keep searching, just keep searching, searching, searching. Sakira, no singing. What do we do? We search, search, search. <sighs> la, 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 I love to search. Perhaps Zakira is right. Perhaps Omar should keep searching. Perhaps Isaiah will offer him some hope. All righty. Tune in next time to see if Isaiah 42 does indeed offer Muslims some hope.